Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today I'm gonna show you how to take all those fun watercolor pencils that you've been hoarding and how to use them to paint a face, color skin, or generally draw a human type figure. So if that's something that you're excited to see, make sure you give the video a big thumbs up. It really does help me out, just so you guys know. So before I jump into the tutorial, I do want to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of this video. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So if you don't know what Skillshare is, basically it's an online learning platform. They have thousands of classes in a huge range of topics, including art and design. Um, so it's a great place to go if you are a self-taught learner or you want to branch out a little bit more. There's a bunch of classes on all kinds of different things, including watercolor pencils if you want to learn a little bit more, as well as classes by a bunch of art YouTubers, including Chloe Rose Art, who's an amazingly talented digital painter. So there's a lot of really, really cool things that you can learn from Skillshare. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to all of the classes and it's only $10 a month with an annual subscription or $15 a month without an annual subscription. So if that sounds like something that might be helpful for you, um, a place that you can learn a little bit more, or you're just looking to expand your knowledge, then make sure you check out Skillshare. I'm going to have a link below in the box, in the description box, and the first 500 people are going to get a two month free trial. So if you would like to check out Skillshare, support this video, support me, click the link below um, and take a look at that free trial if that's something that you feel like might help you. Um, and yeah, without any further ado, thank you again to Skillshare. Let's move on to this watercolor pencil tutorial and I'm gonna show you again how I made this face and how I shaded the skin, as well as talk a little bit about a couple different skin tones and just kind of some best practices that I have found work best for me with watercolor pencil. Um, little disclaimer, this is just my opinion. This, I'm not like trained in watercolor pencil. This is just things that I have figured out that work for me over the years, so I hope that this is helpful for you guys as well. Let's get started. So the first skin tone that I'm going to work on is a lighter skin tone and I'm going to start with a base of the cream, basically a light yellow and I'm going to use that to establish kind of just the overall shading of the piece. Then I'm going to go in with cinnamon which is kind of a light traditional, traditional flesh tone and I'm going to start to deepen up those shadows and depth of the skin a little bit more. Then I'm going to add in a light purple pink by Albrecht Durer, which is again just a bright pink and I'm going to use that to kind of add some rosy tones to the skin. This is my trick with skin. You always want to add a little bit of blue. So for this I'm using the light ultramarine and I'm adding some light blue into the shadows. This is going to give it more depth and more realism. I'm also using some burnt ochre and then again some Venetian red after this to really deepen up those shadows and add some more warmth to the skin. It's important to remember that skin has so many different tones in it. If you look at your skin, there are blues, there are yellows, and there are reds. So you want to make sure that you're using all of those different colors and um, keeping everything well blended to create some realism. Then I'm just adding some water, not in the most controlled way, um, to kind of uh, activate these colors and blend everything together. And that is generally how I create a light skin tone. Light skin tones are definitely the ones that I am most specialized in, but I did want to show you a couple other skin tones as well that are just a little bit deeper. So this is more of a medium skin tone, and I start with a burnt ochre instead of the light cream because it's a darker skin tone. Then I go in with a Pompeian red, which is similar to Venetian red, but it's a little bit brighter and a little bit darker. I'm using this to kind of get the blood flow to the skin. Then I'm using cadmium orange. Um, this is going to add that brightness and richness to the skin as well as adding some light yellow tones, but they're not too light. Going back in with my light ultramarine, the same as in the lightest skin tone. Again, your skin, if you look at your skin, you have your veins underneath. They're generally going to appear blue or purple, so it can be helpful to add blue or purple into your skin. Then I'm using a raw umber. And again, the Pompeian Red, just to keep adding depth to those shadows and making sure that there is enough red in the skin, that it doesn't look dead, that it looks lively, that you can tell there's blood flowing underneath it. And then finally, I am darkening up the very edges of the shadows with indigo, which is a dark, dark blue. Um, and I said finally, but clearly not, and adding some Venetian Red over the top just to again make sure things don't get too blue, which can be sometimes a little bit tricky. I use the lighter blue for places that I want to be in shadow, but I don't want them to be quite as dark as the indigo. And that's how I create more of a medium skin tone um, with watercolor pencils. 
For the deep skin tone, I am definitely the least experienced. I know, a complete shame on me. Um, but I did want to include a deep skin tone in here, but I did make one mistake that I'm going to talk to you about. So I started out with a whole base of the Burnt Ochre and then the Venetian Red over the top, um, just because I wanted the highlight to not be bright white. Obviously, there can be a bright white highlight depending on the light source, but this is more of a soft light so source. Um, and then I went in with the Raw Umber just to start establishing where that shadow was going to be. Um, so this is a very... A warm deep skin tone um, and I'm adding in the deep scarlet red to make it really red and rich um, so obviously that skin tones have different undertones so depending on the undertone of your skin tone that's going to depend on the colors that you put in as you can see these are pretty similar to some of the colors that I've used in the past um, in the first two skin tones but I'm using them in different orders and in different intensities and in different places um, so for a different undertone you may want to use less red and more yellow or more purple depending for this deep skin tone I actually forgot to add in walnut brown walnut brown is going to make um, this skin tone a lot less red and a little bit more rich and uh, brown I guess um, and this skin tone did come out quite red and that's because I did forget to add a very dark brown to the shading so if you are imitating this and you don't want the skin to be quite as red then make sure you add a darker brown just to help counteract that redness but that is how I create a dark skin tone um, with watercolor pencils so now that you kind of have a basic understanding of some of the ways that you can create some basic skin tones um, with watercolor pencils, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I put the skin tones to use on a actual painting. Um, so I have this drawing of a face here, just a super, super basic face. And the first thing that I'm going in is I'm actually going in with kind of a little bit more of my mid-tone to really start establishing where the shadows are at. I'm not doing any sort of fancy light source with this. Um, and I decided to go with a little bit more of a lighter skin tone since that's what I am most used to doing and am most comfortable with and feel most skilled at. <laughs> um, so I started with the color cinnamon and I used that to start establishing all of the shading. So there's not a very dramatic light source here. So mostly I'm just adding shading around the edges of her face, um, the edges of her nose, under her eyes, and down by her chin area as well as obviously like the forehead. Um, so I just keep things very, very light right now, and I'm not too worried about being super, super neat. I'm just going to continue to build up layer upon layer of colored pencil. So I'm going in with my second layer now, which is the Albert Durer Cream. I'm using this lighter yellow, and I'm going around the edges of the highlighted areas, so the parts where the white of the paper is still showing. And I'm adding in this yellow around the highlights to add more depth and interest to the actual highlight area. You don't want your skin tone to be the same color everywhere. As I said before, skin varies depending on how much blood is underneath or what part of the skin you're looking at. So now I'm going in with my light ultramarine and I'm adding in those blue tones. The first place that I add the blue tones is of course under the eyes. Um, I think that's where on our face you can see blue most prominently in most people. And then I'm also adding it for shading around the bridge of the nose and then the edges of the forehead as well as under her cheekbones in the back part of your jawline that recedes away. For under the jawline, I try to create basically sort of a weird diagonal rectangle. Um, you can kind of see what I'm doing right here with like this like little rectangle under the cheekbones. And I find that really helps recede the back of that jaw into space. Then I'm adding in the light purple pink to add the flesh, uh, kind of give the flesh a touch of that blood rushing to the surface, adding some blush to her. Um, you know, making sure that she looks alive and not like a dead zombie. So I'm adding this to the places where blood would gather the most generally. So the tips of the nose, the cheeks, and the tips of the ears are the places that I'm going to be focusing on. But I also kind of added around the face um, a little bit on the neck as well. <clears throat> and then I deepen it up with the Venetian red. So I use the Venetian red for where I want blood flow, but I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm actually using this around the edges of the eyes and then in the parts um, underneath the cheekbones. So I use the lighter pink kind of on the top of the cheekbones um, and then the Venetian red under. So if you are a girl and you contour with your makeup, think of it like contour. You'd basically put the pink where you put the blush and the Venetian red where you're going to put your contour. Um, and then the highlight where you put your highlight, it's like the white of the face. So if you are a girl and you do contour your face, then you can kind of think of contouring things when you're drawing a face. It kind of does help. Now I'm going in with the raw umber. This is a 
darker, more yellow toned brown. And I'm using this and the walnut brown to add some depth to the shadows, um, both under the jawline and then around the eyes. It's important to take into account the undertone of the brown that you're using when you're uh, placing it on the, uh, the page. A warmer brown is going to pop forward a little bit more and a cooler brown is going to recede a little bit more. Um, so I do try to keep that in mind when I'm placing colors is, is it a cool color or a warm color and how much is it going to pop? If that makes sense. Now I'm going back in with the burnt ochre and basically just kind of going over the whole thing to deepen up the shadows and deepen up the skin tone. Um, it's really important when you're using watercolor pencils to not just rely on your brush and the water to do the blending for you. You do need to blend with the colored pencils as well. So as you can see, I work in a lot of layers, just building up, building up, building up, building up. I personally find that watercolor pencil works best if you only do one or two layers of watercolor pencil. I do have a hard time personally building up lots of layers of watercolor pencil on top of one another, so I think it's best if you can get as many of the tones in one or two layers as possible. Now I'm adding in the water. I'm using a black velvet silver brush to do this. All my supplies will be listed down in the description box below if you're curious. And I am starting from the center of the forehead. So that's the lightest part in this specific painting. I'm basically starting from the highlight because when you add water, and I mentioned this in my previous video, so again, make sure you watch that. But when you add water, it pushes away the pigment. So the place that you start at is generally going to be the lightest place. It's just going to make it a lot easier for you to blend. So I start with the lightest, Obviously the highlights under her um, eyebrows, center of her uh, nose, center of her forehead, and then I blend outwards towards the darker areas. Try to kind of see the way that I work the brush, I guess. Um, brush control I think is really important in watercolor pencil and it's the trickiest part. I am not a master of it at all yet. Um, it can be very easy to lift things up or for things to get patchy or a little bit weird, but I think that's kind of the charm of watercolor pencils. And I think that when you're working with watercolor pencils, it's really important before you start for you to let go of any expectation you have of your art being perfect because that simply is not going to happen. Watercolor pencils are by their nature imperfect. You're adding water to a dry medium on the paint paper. One of the charms of watercolor pencils is that they are somewhat unexpected and you don't always know the exact results that you're going to get. Um, sometimes things will look a little bit uneven or a little bit patchy and in my opinion that is just part of the charm of watercolor pencils but there are some things that you can do to fix it and I will show you that working on fixing some of the patchiness towards her left cheek. Um, but yeah, uh, for the places with a harder line, for example, the shadow under her jawline and the sides of her nose, I waited to do those until last, add water to those until the very, very end. And the reason for that is that the drier the areas around it, the harder and more crisp of a line I'm going to be able to get with those areas. So that's why I waited to do them until last. Now I'm adding in the lips. I'm just using some red colored pencils to add these lips in. Um, again, I think that it's important to work in layers. So the way that I'm approaching this piece is I kind of do the first layer of everything and then I'm going to do a second layer to really define the details. For the eyes, I take a light gray. This is warm gray V. Um, I think that's five, right, in Roman numerals. And then I also take a light violet, and I use these to very lightly add some shading just around the very, very edges of the eye. And then I add water, again, working from the outside towards the inside to shade the whites of the eyes. For the eyes, you can really use any color that you want. I decided to use a green eyes, so I used a medium green, earth green, yellowish to add in a base tone, then I used a darker green to add in some shading and a yellow to add in some tones as well as a black to really darken up that shadow, basically creating a gradient and then I filled the whole thing in. Your eyebrows are of course going to depend on the hair color that you have, but I do always try to use at least two colors in the eyebrows just to give them a little bit more dimension. For this I just used walnut brown and then I added some burnt ochre over the top. Then I went in to the lips again and started to add some more definition with Middle Cadmium Red, um, which is just a darker red, um, and just added some shading to the top lip and a little bit to the bottom lip as well, as now that I am moving into the second stage, now that everything kind of looks like it's got a flat base on it, I'm moving on to the second stage of adding in some more shadows. So to, for the face, the first place that I do this is the cheekbones, and I'm going to be using the Derwent Light Violet. And I'm basically just going around the entire piece, darkening up those shadows, adding some purple to those shadows. I think adding purple to shadows can really help 
up your realism. It doesn't always have to be purple. It really depends on the lighting situation. You can use blue or even green. It just depends on what lighting you want. Heck, you can use red. But I think adding some color in shadows can really go a long way towards establishing the tone of a piece. Then I use the light ultramarine to add more blue under her eyes. And then I add that in the very bottom of her jawline. Again, remember that like sort of uh, diagonal rectangle that I was talking about? The reason that I'm adding blue there and purple a little bit higher is that because purple has some red in it, it's gonna come forward a little bit more than that blue. So I put that blue below the purple to push the jawbone back even further while not pushing her cheekbones back further. I'm continuing to use these same colors for the most part that I used before to go around and darken everything up, warm up certain places, and just kind of make the whole piece look a little bit more three-dimensional and uh, kind of finished. I'm adding in again some more light purple pink. I felt like you could never have too much blush and I wanted her skin to really look alive. Um, and again with that Venetian red, it just darkening up the shadows. Um, and then going in with the cream and adding that for that like yellow right around the edges of the highlight where the white blends into everything else. For the last uh, water kind of pass on the skin, um, I started with the shadows this time um, because I really wanted them to be dark and have these really crisp lines. So the first thing I did was define the shadows and then I worked around the rest of the piece to blend in the rest of the extra shading that I added. And I think the extra shading really does help give this a little bit more of a pop. So if you're not loving how blended things got when you first put down your water, don't fear, just make sure that your paper is completely dry. I like to use a hair dryer for this. And then you can go over with a second layer, potentially even a third layer. It just kind of depends on you, your pencils, your paper, how well it's going to take it. And build up that shading and build up more colors that you want. So don't worry, it's going to be okay. <laughs> um, so uh, that is, I'm kind of moving towards the end on the skin here. I am going to show you a little bit more about how I detail in the eyes. Um, so I basically just take a darker color in my second layer. It's that same mineral green and establish where the pupils will be and a shadow on the top of the eye. And then I go in with just black and uh, kind of do the same thing again and add in some light yellow. Um, pretty simple and then I'll add some white gel pen over the top for highlights to that as well as the lips. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black ink pen and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to re-darken these black lines. As you can see they did get quite faded. Um, I do find that with what with working with watercolor pencil, oftentimes you want to redo your black lines at the end if you already have lines to start because they do get sort of covered up and a little bit eh, kind of gray. So that's the last thing that I do to complete a watercolor face. I hope that this video was helpful for you and I really hope that you learned something. I hope that it was clear and let me know if you have any questions down below. Um, if there was anything that didn't make sense to you, I am more than happy to explain it. So yeah, that's that's how I paint a face. I hope you liked it. All right, that is it. This is how the picture turned out, as you guys saw. Um, I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope that you learned some skills from it. Um, give it a big thumbs up if you did. It really does help me out, and it's the best way for you to support my channel is just giving the video a thumbs up. Something super easy and quick that you can do. If you liked this video and you want to see more, then I do upload new art videos every week, so come join the Wonderland fam today. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands, but they're the only thing on the screen right now, so I feel like they need to be engaging. But yeah, hit the notification bell, hit the subscribe bell to come join the Wonderland fam and check out the rest of my art videos. Um, huge thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out down in the description box below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, guys, and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye! <laughs>